Seventh in the world, Uganda, 4933, and their second spa challenge Tri Nations match at the Cape Town International Convention Centre to remain unbeaten in the tournament. They're without their international players, which provides the squad with the opportunity to develop depth ahead of the 2023 World Cup, which will be hosted in South Africa. One of the players who is based abroad is South Africa's top scorer from the last World Cup, Linise Pothita, who is contracted to the Adelaide Thunderbirds. She joins me on Zoom from Sydney with less than 48 hours of mandatory quarantine left. A very good morning, Lenise, and welcome to Morning Live. Hi, it's great to be um, on Morning Live. Um, it's very good morning to you, but it's half past five at night, my time. Okay, so I see you mentioned on social media that uh, you have a lot of respect for those professional players that have gone through quarantine. You've now gone through the experience. Can you share a little bit about that experience? Yes, um, so I have been through it last year when we went back to South Africa. Then we came back to Australia and that's the first time that I did quarantine in Brisbane. So that was quite sunny um, and that wasn't too bad because that's a new experience. Then this year when we came, came over, we are in Sydney at the, um, at the moment and it's been raining all the time and these couple of weeks, it's just so hard to try and keep motivated when you see your teams training together and they're going away to play pre-season games. Um, obviously, you do get tired of the food because... You, like every person loves variety, um, but they have taken care of us. The rooms, they're quite big and spacious, so we can do our training sessions in our club, um, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They organize equipment, um, white bikes for us just to keep active and not to lose any fitness that we gained in preseason. So um, it's been a, like a tough, let's say lost, like second week the first week was fine um that was still again you're in the new thing you can do this but the second week you're just like okay i'm ready to get back to my team now it's time <laughs> how have you been dealing with that because i think for anybody to be confined in a room even if it is quite spacious and the fact that you have got equipment that you can use it can't be easy no um i'm one of those people that enjoy being on their own. Um, I don't have to be social all the time or go out, but this time I really felt like I've been in pre-pre-pre-season since um, November last year. I've not, I don't have any training teams or training partners back in Polokwane in Limpopo. Um, so I literally train on, I've trained on my own since November up until this coming Monday. <laughs> That's the first time I'll actually be in an environment where I'm going to train with a coach and with my teammate or my friend. So that's that was the thing that's going to me. Like, okay, I am a quite a loner, but it's it's time now that I can be out in civilization with teammates and friends and just get the ball going. Uh, quarantine measures also scuppered the chances of some Bafana Bafana players to return for the international window on the footballing front. How difficult is it to travel as a professional sports person? This is not what you had in mind when you became a professional netball player. No, not at all. Um, this year it's been quite tough on us. We actually had to get exemptions from the Australian government um, allowing us to get into Australia. Um, because we work here, basically. So that was a good thing for us. Then, um, because of COVID, we would have flown over um, the 2nd of February, a week before we got, a me not even a week before, maybe five or four days before, we got a message from our manager, and she's like, our oh, girls, um, Singapore or Qatar Airways, they've, I don't know what the reason was, but there wasn't enough interest or there was too much and the um, amount of people on the planes were too many so our flight got cancelled. Then again a few months, like a month and a little bit more went, um, went away and our next flight was the 10th of March. Again, not, not even a week before we got a um, call from our manager and she's like, she's so sorry but um, 
I don't, I can't even remember where it was. They're not allowing South Africans. Oh, Singapore. They're not allowing South Africans on the airport, even if it's for transit. So your flight's been cancelled. <laughs> but luckily, we got a flight on the 12th of March again with Qatar. Um, but that was those were three flights. The first flight was eight and a half hours. The second flight was seven and a half hours, and the third flight was eight and a half hours. Um, then we get to the airport. We have to go through all these um, like guidelines or requirements. We landed on like two weeks ago Saturday at 8:30 p.m., but we only arrived at the hotel at 10:30 p.m. So again, now time zones. <laughs> that's also another thing. I haven't had a good night's sleep in two weeks because sure. my body is so used to South African time. But we're getting there. Um, I think once we're in our normal r- routines, everything is going to go back to normal and we're going to be ready for the season. Lenise, thank you very much for sharing with us some of your experiences being a professional sports person and having to deal with the coronavirus and still be able to work and play. We wish you all the best of luck uh, for the season, which is going to get underway in Australia on the 1st of May.